Hey everyone, Jeffro here. Thanks for tuning in to yet another vlog post. It's been a while, so I figured I would post an update about what's been going on. Because there's a couple things that have been going on. First thing is, um, Kristen and I have been looking for ways to come up with uh, extra money, get some new revenue streams coming in. And um, one thing that I'm gonna try is to dip my toes into real estate photography. And to do that, I'm gonna be offering uh, drone shots as well as traditional, you know, um, inside and outside shots of the, the property to be sold. So after I get my ducks in a row, I'm gonna start looking up and talking to some realtors and see what I can get going and see what kind of uh, money I can make with that. So to that end, I had to get some new equipment because the stuff I have is woefully old or underpowered for what I need it to do. Uh, first and foremost would be a new digital SLR. I've been wanting a new camera for a long time, but it's not something I really, you know, had to have or needed. Well, I finally managed to get one. Um, I got the Canon SL3, Rebel SL3. Um, very affordable camera. It came with a nice, uh, I believe, 15 to 75 millimeter kit lens. It does 4K video at uh, 24 frames a second. Um, and I wanted a camera that would shoot 4K. Um, that was one of my requirements. And my old camera, being 20 years old, did not shoot 4K. It didn't shoot any kind of video. Um, shooting video through an SLR is is pretty, it was a big step for that piece of equipment when it happened because all of a sudden people with you know their lenses now had a video uh, camera that could shoot all those lenses so if you had a 75 to 300 millimeter telephoto you could now shoot video through that lens and it was a kind of a game changer um, the the cost of entry to produce digital video um, just fell through the floor. It went from, you know, above $10,000 for a 4K camera and an editing bay to, you know, the cost of now an iPhone and any consumer laptop and tablets and iPhones for that matter can edit video. Um, and there's some really powerful editors out there. Um, Adobe Premiere and Apple don't have the stranglehold on the nonlinear editing community that they used to. But so to that end, I'm actually shooting this post on the camera right now. It's uh, sitting on my new tripod. It's another new piece of gear, gear I had to get. I found a really nice one for under $100. And tripods are one of those things you can spend a ton of money on. When I worked here in Fresno at a photo store, some of the higher end pro level tripods were easily three to six hundred dollars and that's not including the head that you would actually set your camera on. I don't have four hundred dollars to spend on a tripod so this eighty seven dollar one is going to do just fine and it's really nice. It's got a nice head unit on it. It's got um, uh, it's got a bubble level built in. It feels pretty sturdy um, and it came with its own little bag which I wasn't expecting so I was happy about that and I think I'm going to be using that quite a bit. So along with the new camera, I also got a new drone. Very excited about that. Um, if I am going to be serious about doing drone photography for real estate, the Mavic Mini 1 that I had was not going to do the job. Um, it didn't do 4K video, it didn't do active track, it just wasn't going to be able to produce a sellable product basically. With this new drone, I can shoot 4K video, I can give it a flight path and just snap pictures along the way. It's going to make the job way easier and I can't wait to get started. But it's a completely new drone. Um, I went with the version with its own standalone controller. So I've got a, a new piece of gear to learn and with that new drone there's a lot of new options, a lot of new flight tools. So I've been trying to trying to learn that. Took it out for its first real flight today. Uh, there's a big dirt field behind our apartment complex and I took it out there to fly it. Um, I got it up in the air for just a couple seconds when I first got it just to hear how quiet it was and boy is it quiet. Um, but the real flight was today and it performed spectacularly. I loved it. It's a very quiet. Sport mode is fast. Um, 
I got the fly more package, which means I got three batteries and a charger and a bunch of extras. It's neat. I'll probably have a longer video on that device um, as, as we move forward. But for now, I'm still learning how to basically do all the new stuff on the drone, and it's pretty cool. Um, I did take the old drone above the apartments. I don't really like flying it in the complex for obvious reasons. You don't want people to think you're you're looking through their windows with a drone. Um, but we do have this big grass area in the common space next to the pool, and I wanted to get some overhead shots of that. So was able to make that happen, and yeah, they came out pretty good. It gave me uh, another excuse to fly it, which I'm always looking for an excuse to fly my drone. This was on the old drone, the Mavic Mini 1, um, so it's only going to shoot, it was only shooting high def video, not 4K, but, you know, unless you're really looking for it, sometimes it's hard to tell. But, if I'm going to start a business selling video, I have to have 4K video to sell. It's just, there's just no way around that. It's just, anything else is, is an inferior product. We've still been working on maybes issues with wanting to go outside. A uh, quick catch up for anyone not in the know. When we moved into the complex, she came from having her, her own house with her own backyard that she could basically get in and out of whenever she wanted. She barely had to even let us know. To now, she's done in a second floor apartment where she either has to get let outside to go for a walk to go potty or use the AstroTurf potty pad that we have on our balcony. And she's not really a fan of the potty pad, but I mean, would you be? Um, but after about three weeks of living here and taking regular walks through the complex, she all of a sudden became terrified of going outside. Um, she just wouldn't want to do it. So slowly but surely, she's gotten her, her, her fear is kind of relaxed a little bit and she's letting us take her for walks again. And I miss the walks because I liked them too. And she didn't really, she wasn't getting any exercise. So that wasn't a great thing. So we've started that up again, and we have a park not too far from here called Railroad Park. It's actually really nice. There's, um, it's, a, it's a really modern park. It has a spot that has bike tools and a air pump for your bike. So if you need a quick fix or something while you're there, everything's on these chains and no one can steal them. And uh, if you need to pump up the air in your bike, there's a, there's a pump right there. There's a, um, there's a drinking fountain along the trail that is for dogs. You can just fill it up for the dog and it's down at the ground on their level. The park actually um, intersects a trail that goes through Clovis. And um, that's part of what that, what that is and that's part of what you're seeing right now. The park itself is really nice. Um, maybe was happy about 10 minutes and then she wanted to go home. Um, because again, she's still dealing with some kind of internal fear that she hasn't gotten rid of yet. So once she was ready to go home, she wanted to get into the car as quickly as possible. So we did that, but I was able to get some nice shots and I don't really like the, taking the camera to the park because a strange white guy walking around the park with a camera is not always a great look. So it helps if I have Kristen with me because she's, uh, she's like, oh, this guy's married. He's not a pervert. Hopefully that's what people think. So I finally cleaned up my office, which I'm filming in right now. Um, it had boxes and all sorts of stuff everywhere because it was kind of a staging area for when we were moving in. And since I only really used it for my job, it didn't have to be, you know, immaculate. But I finally got another shelf up, finally got all my books up. So for the most part, it's done. I need to get some stuff on the walls. I have a lot of artwork, but I need to get some of that stuff framed before it goes up. Um, and I do want a second calyx shelf, like the one that's behind me, uh, for that wall over there, because I still need more space for Legos and books and all sorts of knickknacks. So hopefully we'll be making that happen fairly soon. That would be nice. We did get to see Ant-Man, of course. It's a new Marvel movie. We're going to see it as soon as possible. We try to go Thursday nights if we can, uh, but we ended up going Friday evenings since I'm currently not working. I didn't lose my job. I took a couple weeks off for some, some health issues that I'm dealing with, so it's been kind of nice. 
freed up my schedule a little bit and take some of the pressure off. But because of that, we were able to see an Ant-Man showing on Saturday afternoon. Always fun to go to the theater. Um, this time it was Kristen and I, and um, like last time, we did the Edwards the VIP seating, which um, if you're not familiar with, the VIP section of the theater is a, it's off to the side. It's a, it's a completely, well, I don't want to say it's a separate part of the theater, but it is separate from the rest of the non-VIP theater. There's, the, that section has its own screens with the really nice reclining leather chairs. Well, I don't know if they're leather, but the recliners. You got your table, a little swing up table in front of you. Uh, the ticket price gets you free popcorn, free fountain drinks. Pepsi products. They had an ice cream machine for soft serve, but they said they took that out and they do have an icy machine, which is nice. Those are all free, serve yourself, and popcorn as well. I don't know if I said that, free popcorn. And then they do have a full bar right in the VIP area as well. So if you want a mixed drink or a cocktail of some kind, they can make it for you there. I always like to chug a Long Island iced tea right before going into a Marvel movie. Kind of sets the sets the mood right. So that's always fun. And of course, we enjoyed Atman. I tell people it wasn't my favorite Marvel movie, but for what it was, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, Paul Rudd as Scott Lang is 100% watchable. I'd, I'd watch that character read from the phone book. Everyone else is, you know, top of their game. You know, you got the old schoolers, Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Douglas. They're they're perfect as always. Uh, the newcomer, Catherine Newton, she's really good as Cassie. I like her a lot. Of course, Paul Rudd is Paul Rudd. He's great in everything he does. The obvious star of the movie, though, is Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror. And he honestly does not get enough screen time. And when he is on screen, you can't look at anything else. He's just, he's amazing in that role. And a lot like Ramonda was in uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, every time Angela Bassett was on the screen, you just, you can't look away. She's just, just a, a master actor at the height of her skills, you know, demonstrating her craft. She was great. Of course, Jonathan Majors in this role was great too. And he's got extra burden to carry because he has multiple variants of himself that he plays. No spoilers, but this is, this is known. This is from the comics. Kang the Conqueror has different variants of different names and Jonathan Majors uh, gets a chance to, to play all of them. Well, most of them. Some of them. Maybe none of them. I don't know. You'll have to go see it yourself. But it was a lot of fun. There are two post-credit scenes. There's a mid-credit scene that sets up some important stuff for the, for, for the rest of the MCU going forward. And then there's a post-credit scene that looks like it might be a scene right out of Season 2 of Loki. And again, I won't describe either for those of you who haven't seen it, but um, definitely stay for them. They're important. Some of the post-credit scenes aren't as important. These two are important. These two are setting up the future of the MCU, and it's going to be fantastic. So last week was uh, Kristen's best friend and Elisa's birthday, and to celebrate, we went to the Bowling Alley Entertainment Center that's at Fashion Fair. You said Bowling Entertainment Center at Fashion Fair? Yeah, I didn't know it existed either. I might be the last person to find that out. I don't know. Uh, I haven't been to the mall in a while, so I might have just completely missed it. Because when I do go to the mall, it's generally to the Apple Store and straight out. But apparently, there is this place called X Lanes that has opened up exactly what I described. Um, it's in a... The way we went in was actually inside the mall, just like a normal storefront inside, and you take an escalator down into the into the area, and it's it's a 15 lane bowling alley, um, a lot of arcade games, pool tables, full bar, birthday event catering. There was a great menu. There was a lot of food. Um, it was really cool. Had no idea it existed at all. Um, so it was kind of surprising to take an escalator down underneath Fashion Fair and see this, this whole setup. But it was a lot of fun. We got to hang out with Annalisa and some of her friends and Kristen's mom and, and a bunch of people. It was great. We had some, we had some drinks. I got a nice little buzz. So 
everyone was happy, everyone had a great time. It was a lot of fun. And the entertainment center was great. I mean, it's video games, bowling, pool table, full bar. Um, most of the video games are ticket style games. Um, where you win tickets and then you know trade them in for prizes, but still it's it's really neat down there It's definitely worth checking out uh, prices were reasonable. You rent the bowling alley by the by the hour very fun Definitely check it out. It's called X lanes. It's in fashion fair. You can get to it um, inside the mall through one of the regular storefront openings or there is a uh, an opening at the back of the mall to to get in, so you don't have you don't you can get in without having to actually go into the mall. So check it out; it's really cool. So finally, we managed to squeeze in a Disneyland trip. It's been a couple months now. Things were stressful with our move, and you know, life throwing stuff at us that we weren't expecting, and we decided we needed a trip to Disneyland. That's Kristen's happy place. It's a place I like going to. We always have a good time. Uh, we get to spend time with each other, which we always enjoy. We do like spending time with each other, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, we, we went for three days or two and a half days, and the last day was actually kind of cut short because it was raining. And we didn't want to spend a whole lot of time there because I had to work the next day and we had to make an Ikea stop. I haven't started working on a video for that trip yet. I might do that in the next week or so, but um, uh, we got some good footage as usual. We had a, had a great time. Disneyland's always fun. And because the season passes, it doesn't generally cost us a whole lot. All we need to do is make sure, you know, we have a tank of gas and a place to stay. And Kristen is very good about finding really good hotel deals. So um, that's that's what we did. Found a good hotel. And they had been expensive. Um, even after COVID, the hotel rates around Anaheim were really expensive. They finally leveled out a little bit. So we, we spent the weekend. Sorry, it wasn't even the weekend. Since I'm working a different schedule, we, we went on a Thursday. And we're, you know, already planning our next trip. But as far as updates go, I think that's about everything. Um, Kristen's still hard at work at making this apartment into a home for us, and she's doing a fantastic job. It looks great. She's building her own kind of office set up right now in the in the dining room because uh, with my job at Apple, we can't really share an office. I deal with uh, protected personal information, and I can't have anyone in the room when I'm on the phone with people, so we can't share an office, so, so she has to have her own. And she just got it, the, the tabletop set up. And I've been looking forward to it also because that's gonna be my Lego building surface. And I need a place to build that Millennium Falcon because the thing is huge and I intend on filming it to some degree and making like a time lapse out of it. To do that, I need to work on it in the same place, you know, throughout the project. So I think that's what that's gonna do. I cannot wait to get started with that because I've been wanting that set forever. And it's just kind of sitting over there in the corner and it's just looking at me saying, when are you going to build me, Jeff? And I keep telling it, as soon as I can, Falcon, as soon as I can. But anyway, that's the update for now. I appreciate you sitting through my rambling. As always, any likes or subscribing would be appreciated. My channel doesn't really have any kind of cohesive theme right now. I've made it pretty clear that right now my channel is just a dumping ground for, you know, what I'm trying to do to teach myself editing. I always appreciate any views, any comments, any likes, any subscriptions. It means a lot to me and it uh, lets me know I'm, I'm at least doing something right. So thank you for that. And again, thanks for watching. We will talk to you very soon. Everyone have a great day.